welcome to Real Talk. I'm Denise E.D. Richardson, and this is my co-host, Eklund Anderson. Hello. Here on Real Talk, we focus on family, health, community, restoration, church, and giving real solutions from the Word for very real problems. Today we are excited because we have our special guest, Dr. Regina Patrick. She is pastor of Life Changes Ministry. She's also a motivational speaker, a life coach, and so many other things. So we just can't wait to get started talking to you, Dr. Regina Patrick. So Dr. Patrick, yes. tell us about your walk with God. How did your journey begin? As a young woman, I was a teenager when I really began to hear the call of God on my life. But I thought I was way too young. Like I thought this was for old people to get ready to go to heaven, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it, it, I didn't qualify for that, but it didn't go away. And so for a number of years, I just kept really, I really felt drawn to get saved, get born again, but I didn't even know what that meant. Mm -hmm. And so at about to age 21, and I was already married, because I got married as a teenager, and I was a mom as a teenager. I was a teenage mm -hmm. mom, teenage bride. Mm -hmm. And I really was enjoying this new life, and I was not thinking about getting saved. I didn't even know what getting saved was, but it wouldn't go away. Mm -hmm. And so I, I went and had a conversation with some people that I respected, and I knew they were born again. And that, that my grandmother basically told me, don't run from that call. And if you're feeling led that it's time for you to get saved, go ahead and give your life to Jesus. So on her wisdom, because she was my favorite human, <laughs> I went on and I committed my life to Jesus Christ at home and on my couch. I was not at church. I didn't hear an altar call. Nobody led me to the Lord. I just lifted my hands and asked Jesus to come in my heart. And I had a complete, complete list, a, a, a whole born again experience right there. The earth didn't quake. There was no lightning strike. I didn't see angels, but I knew that the experience was real and it transformed my whole life and my thinking in that moment, and I've been serving God ever since. Wow. Uh, right. Yeah. No pastor. No pastor, Church. no preacher. Uh -huh. No. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit oh, in wow. my living room. I was filled with the Holy Spirit then. And so I had never even heard of the Holy Spirit. I didn't even know. Well, I had heard, I obviously heard of it, but not with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I had no inkling about none of that. But I was in field with the Holy Spirit that day. It was amazing at home. Amazing. You had a Samuel like experience. I did. When I God really called did. Samuel, <laughs> he was told to say, Lord, hear my. Hear my. Go ahead. Exactly what happened. Go ahead. Exactly what happened. All right. yeah. So I know you're into motivational speaking yes. and that you're an author. Yes, I am. Let's talk about your books. Okay, wonderful. Again, I got born again when I was very young. And uh, I always dance. I absolutely, with the capital L, love to dance all my life. As a matter of fact, I'm, for the Detroit people to that understand, they'll, they'll know what I'm saying. I was five years old, and I won the dance contest at Bill Out. This wow. was a gazillion years ago. That's a big deal, though. Yeah. At Bell well, it was amazing. <laughs> and they asked all these children to come up on the stage, and my aunt took me on the stage and said, Dance, baby. I want you to dance. I'm like, okay, that's what I do. And I got on the stage. I won the dance contest at age five. <laughs> and I loved the dance. And I could I could catch on really quick. I would see adults dancing. And if they were doing a step, I learned how to do it. So I always enjoyed dancing. So here I am, a young woman. I get born again. And I, I'm told I can, there's no dancing. You're a Christian now. I thought, whoa, well, okay. And one day I'm worshiping God. And I get up in, the, in my bedroom. I have a lot of encounters with God in my private, pra my private praise and my private time of worship. And I'm dancing in my bedroom. <laughs> and while I'm dancing in the presence of God, my hands are lifted. And I'm just really enjoying this time of intimacy with God. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, I never told you not to dance. David dance. David dance. He said, I never told you not to dance, so keep dancing, but just change partners. I went, oh. Amazing. Oh. Amazing. And I got the freedom, and I'm telling you, I started dancing again, and my daughter and I were as, because I had children so young, so I actually grew up with my kids, mm -hmm. and she loved to dance, and uh, we started a dance troupe in our church and our ministry, and we took that 
Um, and I wrote the book for these young kids because they didn't know what to do. They would come to church and go to sleep. Like, oh, we're back right. in church with mom or grandma. And we gave them this outlet of the arts in our ministry, and it loved it. And many of these children grew up and got scholarships to college from our ministry. And That's this was a long, long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. And so in our community, we were kind of the front runners to start the dance troops uh, here in Michigan. And so it was called the Pure Heart Dancers. And then um, my daughter and I, she was little, and it gave her an outlet, too. And she grew up, and a lot of these children went on. We have children from our ministry that went on to dance for professionally with Alvin and, uh, the Alvin Angel Dancers. Oh, my God, it's just so many. Um, and they went abroad. Some of them went overseas to dance. They got scholarships to dance. And even today, uh, several of the young people that dance with us as kids now have their own dance uh, schools, dance ministries, mm -hmm. and so it, the fruit remains, and I am elated about it, because I still dance, I still love to dance. Awesome. Yeah. Dance is an awesome thing, it's a great it expression. Is. It absolutely is, it absolutely is. So yeah, that was my first book. And, what was the name uh, of it again? Don't Stop Dancing, Don't Just stop. Change Partners. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, yeah. and your second book. You know what, I've been collaborating for the last 10 years of uh, writing about health and weight loss mm -hmm. and also relationships. I, again, I was a child brat and, and my husband are now embarking on what we call our countdown to 50. I've been married 48 years wow. to my high school sweetheart. Thank you. Yes. And listen, this brother's not just fine, he's also kind. He is my knight and shiny armor. Over the years, the 48 years, it's been a life lesson, and it's been amazing because I married my best friend, mm -hmm. and we were children. We literally were children, and then we started raising children, but it's been incredible, and uh, the journey, I wouldn't take anything from it, and we're still best friends today, and the things that we have learned over 48 years now, we help other couples, yes, and it's awesome. just that, and we're going to be married. Can I talk about this real quick? Yes. Go ahead, talk about our part of our countdown to 50, as we get prepared to set, celebrate our 50th wedding anniversary, what we wanted to do is we wanted to take 50 couples that are engaged and 50 couples that are married, and we're going to literally mentor them. And to, so the book we read, my husband and I are collaborating to right now is How to Make Love Last. And we really felt this was a call of God because we see so much divorce, yes. not yes. just in the world, but in the church yes. as well. Mm -hmm. And we see people that are not happy. They, that's just the truth. And they put on their face and they come to church and they go home and they fight. And they're never on one accord. And it, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's costing not just the family, but the children now grow up and they start mimicking their mom and dad's uh, relationships. Yes. So my husband and I have been teaching that your, your home and your relationship is not supposed to be your parents. Because you're supposed to get it right. You're supposed to do better. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to. That's why the scripture says let a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. You are not supposed to inherit your parents' marriage. You can do better. Mm -hmm. And if they were, they were having difficulties and it was dysfunctional, we don't have to repeat that. But that's part of the paradigm that people get stuck in. Mm -hmm. We repeat what we saw. We want to explore your weight loss journey because there are so many people who want to lose weight, have trouble doing it, can't persist. Mm -hmm. So tell us what you did. And tell us where you came from mm -hmm. in that journey. Absolutely. Okay, the story, my story, is um, at 13 years old, my grandmother, I was looking at her like I'm looking at you, mm -hmm. and I kissed her, and she said, I'll see you, I'll see you in a couple of days, and she left her house, and she was killed by a drug driver in a, a car bag that night, wow. and I was 13 years old. Um, so I saw her live and well. She wasn't sickly. I had a very young, I had young parents, I had a young grandmother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she wasn't sick. She just transitioned and she passed. And we did the funeral. And three days later, my parents went back to work and they said, okay, we, we're going back to school. And I remember getting up that morning going, this is what you do. It was the first person in our family that had died that was that close to me. 
and I didn't know anything about grieving. I didn't know anything about the, how you process grieving, mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't discuss it. Everybody went back to work, they went back to school, and life was supposed to go back to normal. Mm -hmm. And I remember this vividly. I was 13 years old, and I would get home early from school before my parents got home from work. I had my own key. And I came in, and there was some a bag of potato chips. So we're from Detroit, so better make potato better chips. Make. <laughs> you know it. Thank right. you. And they, were, they had a huge bag, a family size bag of better make potato chips. And I was sitting on the couch, and I opened up. Now, sound like the beauty is, is uh, mom's going to cook when she gets home from work. And I started eating the potato chips. I would never forget this. Those potato chips tasted like steak. It was phenomenal. And I ate the whole bag in one sitting. Mm. 13. Now, it didn't manifest in way, because you're, you're, you know, now this is back in the day when you could stay out until the street lights came on, right? right? <laughs> so right. I would run up and down the streets with my friends, and I played, I was kind of active. But what I was doing is I was actually grieving. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time I had begun to experience what it felt like to try to fill up the, the emptiness that I had experienced. We were black. <laughs> My my parents' answers to grieving was that pray about it. Right. <laughs> Go pray about it. She's in a better place. And that was kind of where we left it. And they meant well. They loved us. But that was all we got. Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to just trust God. It's going to be all right, baby. Pray about it. But when I ate those potato chips, it was the first experience I had with comfort food. Right. That food comforted me. And I remember I was embarrassed because I ate the whole bag. And I went across the street to them because we lived right off Gratiot <laughs> in Detroit. And I went about more. And I ate that bad too. And I, then I started stashing food. So I had developed this way of trying to console myself from the pain of losing someone that I love dearly. And I found it in, I didn't, I never liked drugs. I was never kind of in drugs. I never took up with alcohol because I would take one sip and I was, the girl was no good, <laughs> no good. So I knew I could never do that. But that food and I developed a very dysfunctional relationship. And I would eat and I would, I would hide food. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't thinking how destructive that that pattern was going to be ultimately. So I started doing that. And then I get married, okay, at 18, and I get pregnant with twins. So my grandma, my grandmother on my mom's side says, baby, you're eating for three. And I loved her. I said, this is a wise woman. <laughs> and I really, now I have permission to do all this secret eating. I cannot do openly because I'm expecting twins, and nobody's going to judge me for eating. Right. And I, I can eat a lot. So I, pa I mean, I packed on the pounds. And I looked up and I gained 100 pounds in nine months. Wow. Nine months. I, I, I weighed 125 pounds when I got married. I weighed 225 when those babies came. Wow. They weighed six pounds. That is not bad. <laughs> so, and then after that, I continued to add this weight on. And I kept gaining the weight. And I was morbidly obese by the time I was 21 years old. So I was unhealthy. And I, but I get born again, and I take, I write God a letter. I say I'm unhealthy and I'm unhappy. Please help. <laughs> and so for 40 years, I tell you, I used to read the Old Testament like, what a bunch of losers! They are going around the same mountain, and they got God. He's providing all this supernatural for them. They don't have to go to Walmart. They don't have to go to Target yeah, and your clothes right. Nothing's happening. <laughs> there are these miraculous <laughs> things happening on a daily basis. Daily, There's provision yeah. for, mm -hmm. from on high. And I used to judge them and I realized my twins were four years old and I was still more than going, around, beast, them going around the same wow. mountain emotionally. So I went on a fast for 21 days. I consecrated on a liquid fast and I said, God, help me because my health was declining at such a rapid rate. And I didn't bring it today, but I had a shirt on when I was tired, when I was fasting. And I called it Big Red, it was a size 32. Wow. And I was on 13 Big medications, Big Red. <laughs> I still have it, and I normally travel with Big Red. And I had a bag that I had to travel with. I had sleep apnea, I had to sleep with a sleep machine, and I walked on the thing. Mm. Now this is the dancing girl that loves to dance and move. And, I, and I had my mobility had was declining so fast I could walk. I had to get help. My husband had to help me because I was so fat. 
so, so, so overweight. And he would have to help me get up off the couch. And we would, one, two, three, you know. And I was only 55 years old. So I said, this is not abundant life. Nothing about my life at that juncture was in agreement with scripture. And I said, you came to give me life and give it to me more abundantly. This is, be I, I literally saw the enemy stealing my joy, stealing my health, stealing my purpose. While I was sitting on the couch with a remote in my hand, and when I went on that fast, I said, God, rescue me. And if you show me and course correct my life, I'll do anything you want me to do because I don't want to die as a failure. Now, I said earlier, I was a quitter. Because one of the things that I did when I, my grandmother died at age 13 and I started all that secret eating mm -hmm. and that comfort food is that I realized that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yes. And what that pain that I was in, that had I had another outlet to trust God, I wouldn't have had to endure that. But when you can never do better until you know better. Right. And so there I was, overeating, and I'm, I'm only five two. I could be the president of the short girls <laughs> club, right? And I'm oh, really morbidly obese, and I'm sick now. So when I go on this fast on day 20, when I put my head on the door to come out the door, because I literally locked myself in a guest room at home, and I come out of the door, and this, I said, God, show me. So for 21 days, I walk in the floor going, I can do all things through Christ. The Lord, God, the thing that you started in me, you will be completed. I am more than a conqueror. I overcome by the blood of the Lamb. So I mean that quoting scripture. Quoting scripture for 21 days, and I would do this for 10, 12, 14 hours a day. Mm. And so when I put my hand on that door now to come out of that room and having been in the presence of God 21 days, I had three things, ladies. When I walked out of there, I had clarity. I had co a control. I knew that I would that food would never control me again. And when I came out, I had confidence. I mean, I knew, I knew that I knew that I had mastered that thing, and that God had set me free. So when I came out, I went to the phone, and I made a phone call, and I ended up connecting with the number one holistic doctor in not America, but the world. And his name is Dr. Joel Wallet. And he wrote this phenomenal book that has been translated uh, into about 20 different languages worldwide mm -hmm. called Dead Doctors Don't Lie. And he's been nominated for the uh, Nobel Prize for his breakthrough in regards to holistic medicine. Mm -hmm. And it's just, just divine providence. I call a phone number that I see on Google. I dial the number and it, the voice goes, hello, and I said, hi. And I said it in one, I didn't even breathe. Hi, I'm Dr. <laughs> Regina, I'm from Detroit, Michigan. I'm morbidly obese and I really want to get healthy. Can you help me? And he said, who are you? <laughs> wait, wait, and wait, I did, wait, yeah. like breathe lady, mm -hmm. you know. And I said it again and he said, I'm Dr. Wallach and yes, I can help you. Amazing. You call oh, me. Yes. It was just, mm -hmm. God, just and I mean, I'm looking at the phone like, Jesus, you've done it, you know. So I, I connect with him, and he says, I'm going to mentor you. And he says three things to me. He said, You will lose the weight. You will never, ever regain that weight again. You will get healed. And I had 10 diagnosed diseases walking on the cane, and as all these different things happen to me physically, he said, You will lose the weight. You will never regain it. You will get healed, and you will not. You all of the diseases and the medications you're on, you'll be off of them in 90 days. And absolutely, he said. But you've got to do. And this was the third thing. If you're willing to do what I'm telling you to do, your life would be transformed forever. And I said, I am your girl. Hallelujah. I will do anything because yeah. mm -hmm. I want to live. When I went in that bedroom, that was my prerequisite to it. God, I do want to live. I don't want to check out because I had seven members of my on my mother's side of the family had died and never experienced the 50th birthday. Mm. And so we can pass this thing down. Sickness and disease can be totally eradicated. And so I partnered with Dr. Wallet. He literally mentors me. I'm, I got him on speed dial. I'm calling, what do I do about this? What do I do? And in 120 days, I was on all of the medicines. 120 That's days. Blessing. It's a miracle. Yeah. And so now 
I'm, I'm walking and people see I don't have a cane and I'm listen, let's dance again and I'm excited about life and I go from a size 32 to a 12 in 12 Amazing. months. 12 months. 150 pounds. Can he do it? Oh, he can do it. <laughs> and he can do it for everybody. And I begin to teach this and the reason I was so adamant about teaching it and I became a life coach because of it because I said people get stuck. So I get these people, and I got about 200 people, and I'm making money. I'm an entrepreneur, and I'm making money selling Dr. Wallace's um, uh, his, his, uh, holistic plan. Mm -hmm. And people are buying it, and they're losing weight. And I'm like, yes, look at this. This is amazing. Yes. And I'm making money, and I'm serving people, and I'm walking in my purpose, and I'm so excited. And then about a year, about a year and a half, two years later, people start gaining the weight back. Their sicknesses and diseases start returning. Mm -hmm. And I got depressed. I said, God, what happened? I mean, we were on a trajectory to change the world. Dr. Regina brings results, you know? Right. <laughs> and I could not figure it out. And so I go and I say, God, show me, reveal to me what happened. And this is what the Spirit of God told me. He said, you gave them your vitamins. You gave them your meal plan. You gave them a diet plan. You did all of the rah-rah. You motivated them. He said, but what they don't have is your mentality. That's it. And I went, what? And he said, Regina, the problem was never your meals. The problem with weight is mentality. And as a man, think of so is he. If you can change a man's mind, then you change their life. Because those other things are just putting band-aids on cancers. You cannot fix that thing at a core level until you go in the spirit room and fix it from the inside out. Mm -hmm. If you don't change the mind, and it's scripture, came, and I begin to really meditate on the scripture, mm -hmm. and it says that you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. You cannot take new wine and pour it into an old wine skin right. because you'll keep getting the same results. If you're going to go and have a new life, you got to have a new mindset. Because as the mind goes, the life goes. And so if, if we, to stop that repeat cycle of failure and dieting, and the majority of people, I did, I, over eight years I've done all the research, the average person that has weight issues and food issues mm -hmm. struggle with that for 25 to 40 years. 25 to 40. And over that, oh, so that's your lifetime. Mm -hmm. That is a generation. Yes. And so over your lifetime, the average American will go on 14 diets. Well, aren't we doing the I same thing? for me. <laughs> <laughs> going around that time. We're doing the same That's thing. It. That's you know, I was appalled when I read that um, obesity mm -hmm. has overtaken tobacco yes. in deaths of black women. Mm -hmm. And it is amazing. Mm -hmm. So this, what you're giving us today, is what our community really, really yes. needs. Yes. And so that's we need mean. a renewal mm -hmm. of our minds. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of times when we read the Bible, we're talking about a renewal, we're talking about a spiritual renewal, mm -hmm. and that is true. But what, what we fail to understand is that fear, spiritual renewal mm -hmm. should also infiltrate mm -hmm. every aspect of our lives where things are askew, Absolutely. okay? Mm -hmm. Because it's only through the renewal of our minds that we can bring things into rightness Absolutely. and right relationship with God. So I am so glad to hear you say all of this. Mm -hmm. So when you discovered that they didn't have your mentality, what did you do? We, we revamped the whole, I literally started to revamp the entire business concept. Mm -hmm. Because, and that's what I became, I went back and got complete certification and mindset transformation and became a transformation thinking coach. Oh. Because I realized we were stuck in bringing people methods and, and trying to heal something and correct something from the wrong perspective. And so if you don't deal with the mindset and you don't change a man's mind, you don't change a man's life. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we see people that go into rehabs, yes. they do, mm -hmm. they try all these things, mm -hmm. and if you don't really minister to their mindset and let them know that you can literally uh, change your mind, the brain, God operates in such a miraculous way that the brain cells regenerate. We have, we can definitely have a mind to mind. And the scripture tells us that we can have the same mind as Christ. 
Let this mind be also in you that was saved in Christ Jesus. So we have to change here. And now, let me, let me rephrase that. Because I don't really want to use change. Because change is like this today. I went and I had on some shoes. And then I went and I changed them into some pink um, uh, gym okay. shoes. And then I went and changed those to some boots. So right. changes is something you can continuously continue to alter. But the Bible doesn't say be changed. It says be transformed. Mm -hmm. So when you think in terms of transformation, you think about the caterpillar. And when he goes in, he's a little yucky little thing, and he got all these <laughs> antennas, and yeah, he's so gross looking, and he's just, but he goes in, and once he spins in the that uh, cocoon, cocoon mm -hmm. and he has to stay there, though, for a long enough for there to be a transformation. When he comes out, he comes out, his DNA has changed. He does not come back, and never can he now he revert back to being what he was when he went in. That's where God wants us. When you get a person to have this experience of mental transformation, and we're supposed to, we get born again on our spirit, man. We are ready. We are like God in that area. Our spirit is new, but then you have to renew the mind. Mm -hmm. So the mind is that, that part of the soul that we have to get transformed. So when we transform our mind, we never revert back. That's why you don't have to diet. You don't have to go to rehab no more. You don't have to go back to drugs. You don't have right. to go back to pornography. Once we get the mind renewed, we mind, I found out that the mind that is transformed will trump any kind of addiction that there is. Because any you kind. are a new creature. A new creature. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the old things pass away. Mm -hmm. And behold, everything else now becomes new. With that new mindset, you can, and this is in every area, it's when you have new money, you can have a new ministry, you can have a new mindset, you can have a new body, but you got to have a new mind first. All right, that's so inspiring. Well, that's mm -hmm. all for today, our show today. Oh. Thank you so much, Dr. My pleasure. Dr. I'm I'm and I'm you inspired. guys did a wonderful <laughs> job. Thank you for having me. All right, before we go, tell us how to contact you. I know there are a lot of people out there who want to talk to you. Oh, absolutely. You can contact me at Dr. Regina Life Coach at gmail.com. That's Dr. Regina Life Coach at gmail.com. Or you can look me up on social media, and particularly Facebook, under my name, Regina Patrick. That's all for our show today. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you, Dr. Regina, for sharing yes. your message with us. Remember, earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. We'll see you again next week. God bless and keep you. If you would like to help support this broadcast, visit realtalktvtoday.com. Remember to join our Facebook page and follow us on Instagram. You can also email us with your thoughts of our show. We look forward to hearing from you. And if you're in the Ypsilanti, Michigan area and would like to be a part of our show, Visit realtalktvtoday.com to find out how. And until next time, keep it real.